Thank you for your wonderful don't know talk. <laughs> um, usually we have a microphone to pass around, but we're down to our last microphone and it's right here. So if you uh, have a question, just shout it out or I will repeat it or maybe both. Uh, so does uh, anyone have a question? I have a question online. Yes. Uh, thank you. Um, for that wonderful Dharma talk, Jane, um, <laughs> I have a question about um, that you said, except that part when you said, except when it's really obvious. And that's where I struggle too. Like for me, okay, like, oh, someone cut me off. Okay, you know, clearly, you know, there's probably something in their life for some reason. But um, that except when it's really obvious, like someone clearly did this on purpose to me. How do you work with that a little? Like, can you talk about that a little bit more? I mean, when you're sure somebody uh, did it on purpose? Yeah, Jane was talking about how she's come to accept the fact like she doesn't like, oh, make bad thoughts about things a lot of times, except for there was this phrase, except when it's really obvious. And for me, I struggle with that also. Mm -hmm. yeah. If that makes sense. Of course, that makes sense. I think uh, most of us uh, are like that. So when uh, you're offended uh, in uh, any kind of way, uh, sometimes uh, it could be in traffic, you know, you know and it's actually dangerous. Uh, usually, though, it's when uh, somebody uh, says something uh, to you, uh, or what's probably even worse, about you and you overheard it, uh, that's um, you know, offensive. Uh, in uh, some way. So uh, that's a wonderful opportunity you know, to uh, perceive you know, your own mind. Usually we're not aware of anything that goes through our mind. It's just running through and we're not paying any attention and one damn thing after another and we spend most of our lives like that. But when somebody offends you, ah, then that moment becomes clear. <laughs> so you could have, first of all, a moment of gratitude. Thank you for waking me up. You know, I'm finally paying attention. <laughs> you might try that, actually. I'm, I'm serious uh, uh, about that. Uh, and then if you give it you know, that quality of attention, then your, your mind is really present. Uh, to you know, this moment, then your mind tends to open uh, in other ways. Uh, why did this person uh, do this? Well, probably for no reason at all, uh, actually. <laughs> you know, just cut you off in traffic. <laughs> Happened to me the other day. <laughs> Happens all the time. And uh, not only you know, being cut off uh, in traffic, but in you know, many, many other ways. And then that catches your attention. And what is your mind like uh, at that moment, you know, besides uh, angry? Can you perceive that? So it's an opportunity to perceive your own mind. And if you uh, become a, a habitual perceive your own mind, person, then the whole world uh, can change. So next time uh, you're, you're cut off by uh, somebody in traffic, wake up. Okay. <laughs> so when your mind does wake up, you can easily put these things aside. But if you get lost you know, in your anger, then a downward spiral, more suffering. So sometimes, yeah, more suffering is necessary, uh, but not when somebody cuts you off in traffic. So that's a good example because that's something that I think all of us can imagine. We can actually deal with that. Uh, so it's a good starting point. Uh, but you know, there are more serious offenses, uh, of course, and. Um, in our interpersonal relationships, some uh, you know, pretty nasty things you know, can actually uh, come up 
And sometimes, you know, we are the perpetrators. Uh, sometimes we are what we perceive to be the victims uh, of it. So this is uh, how human beings are. This is where suffering comes from. So if you can recognize that, uh, then uh, I think you're really on your way to becoming a Buddhist. <laughs> of course, we have these robes, so we're already Buddhists, you know. <laughs> but uh, inside, uh, Buddhist. So insight into impermanence, insight into suffering. Uh, so the uh, Sanskrit word for uh, you know suffering is dukkha. Uh, which means uh, something that's pretty bad. It's kind of what it literally, <laughs> literally means. The, the, the du in dukkha is uh, cognate with uh, like the D-Y-S words that come from Greek, like dystopia, you know, and uh, it's just a, a, strong, a strong negative. So dukkha, yeah. Everything is dukkha. Everything is suffering. What can we do? Wake up! <laughs> That's the starting point. So that moment, hey, your whole life can change. You woke up. Congratulations. <laughs> so thank you, Ali, uh, for your question. Might there be another question? I have a question, and it kind of follows along with that, and, and, uh, and, and the talk was very good. Thank you, Jane. Um, but I have a yes but. Uh, so I kind of get caught up in the, uh, you know, I do something or somebody else do, does something, um, like you just, you just throwing the, the uh, soft item at somebody. Can, can you talk a little louder? Sure. So I'll, I'll just make a hypothetical situation carrying on with, with Jane's example. So somebody throws a soft object at somebody. I'm not going to layer anything on it. I'm not going to make my own story about it. But somebody keeps throwing a soft object at somebody. If you continue to do that, that becomes bullying. Mm -hmm. And so at some point, I do have to say, I do, I do have to possibly do something. You know, I, I do need to make a story and maybe it's not make a story i that's where i get confused because at some point what i do isn't just this innocent i just did something and that's all there is to it there's nothing else to it it's just that one act and nothing more but that that can't be because everything is interrelated everything impacts everything else so i get really caught up in that and yeah. and i don't understand it. Okay. Uh, that's a wonderful perception, you know, uh, that you have. Uh, first of all, I think we're all familiar or have been at some point in our lives with these soft objects continuing to be thrown at us. And, oh, I didn't mean anything. Yeah, but you keep doing it, uh, you know. So that's a common uh, human uh, situation, but what, what you're getting at is, I think, uh, uh, deeper uh, than that. Yeah. So the first thing is what you've already done. First thing to do is to become aware of it. You know, keep perceiving it as perhaps something that uh, you yourself do, and you're only gradually you know, becoming uh, aware of that. And some relationships, I imagine, uh, gratefully, not my own, thank you, <laughs> uh, proceed along uh, those lines. Yeah, 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 yeah. None of the nyas are much, but yeah, 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 yeah begins to be uh, an awful lot. So we can become aware of that uh, in our own behavior and do something about it. But if you're in a relationship where you're the receiver of the multitude of soft objects that continually to be thrown, you have to talk about it. 
and make the partner or the other person, it might not be that sort of relationship, but the other, the other person involved in this relationship who keeps doing this, just bring it up. It's a common human behavior and, as I think you are aware, a very destructive one if uh, allowed uh, to continue. So it's important to be uh, honest uh, about these things, perhaps to take the risk of uh, offending the person who may think, hey, I'm not doing anything, uh, you know, that's really bad, and not being aware that it's uh, the continuing to do any little thing like that that uh, really um, causes suffering. And so once again, you know, the, uh, the causes of suffering uh, in our life. And in Buddhist teaching, it's desire, anger, and ignorance. Uh, in this case that you're talking about, it may often simply be ignorance, not being aware, you know, not paying attention. Or it may be rooted in a desire, a desire to show the other person very subtly, but uh, over and over again, who's the boss? You know, that's a possibility. And it could come out of anger. You know, it, it might be a habitual retaliation. <laughs> So looking at the causes of suffering, whatever kind of suffering it may be, rooted in desire, in uh, anger, and in ignorance. Uh, I think it's a, uh, a teaching we have to be uh, more aware of. Uh, you know, in Zen practice, uh, we often do not get back to the basic Buddhist uh, teachings. Um, but uh, we should, and we should constantly be bringing them up, you know, and the Compass of Zen, the book that Jane was talking about, uh, actually begins. Uh, it's a thick book, and uh, the first uh, chapter, which is maybe, what, 80 pages? You know the book better than I do. I taught it recently. Yeah, 90 or 100 pages, just fundamental Buddhist teaching. You know, just gave you, you know, a, a couple of examples. So sometimes we think of uh, Zen as being sort of um, above it all, you know, the Buddhist. It's uh, so refined and so subtle, yeah, you know, that we don't have to worry about all of these earlier teachings, you know, it's not the case uh, at all. So, you know, we do, as part of our curriculum here, uh, on a regular basis, will teach the compass of Zen, the first part of which is all of Buddha's, uh, you know, basic uh, teachings, and um, try to bring them up in, in, in talks and be aware of them uh, ourselves. So I, I do encourage that sort of actual study. You know, uh, Zen practice is meditation, and you know, that's what the word Zen means. It's the Japanese pronunciation of the Sanskrit word uh, jhana, D-H-Y-A-N-A, -A, and uh, Koreans are pronounce it uh, son, and they're following the, you know, the, the Chinese pronunciation, both of them. But uh, yeah, that's uh, what it is. And uh, I don't know, does anybody have uh, any comment uh, on that? Do you think we should... Uh, teach fundamental Buddhism uh, even to a greater extent uh, than we do? Or some of you have taken a lot of these classes and you've been to a lot of talks. Um, I'd like to hear your impression. I, yeah. I would suggest that maybe after the talk. Well, maybe after the talk, but if somebody has one point now to bring up, because it looks like Wenda does, which well, is why I'm, I'm actually asking the question. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, dana is one of the six uh, paramitas. Actually, it's the first of the six paramitas, the spirit of generosity. And then um, jhana is the fifth, they almost rhyme. <laughs> and, and the sixth is prajna, which all of Buddhist practice, all of Zen practice is uh, leading to you know, a very deep understanding of uh, what this world is 
what yes. human beings are. Stay classes on uh, various uh, sutras, and uh, it is a part of, definitely a part of what we do uh, here at the Kansas Zen Center. Uh, there's time for one more question, if there is one. I'm having a hard time hearing you, I'm sorry. Yes. Yeah. I think most of us here know that we take bowing, by which we usually mean full prostrations, you know, all the way down to the floor, uh, all the way back up, very seriously. Well, uh, this morning we did three prostrations at the very beginning of practice. Uh, early morning practice, which we do three times a week, we do 108 uh, prostrations. Uh, it takes uh, 12 or, you know, or 13 uh, minutes. So 108 times down to the floor, 108 times stand up. Uh, that can be a paradigm for how we live our lives. The way most of us usually live their lives, fall down to the floor, feel sorry for ourselves, start whining, you know, <laughs> and whatever. <laughs> Uh, the point is to, to get up, you know, over and over again. Physically, uh, prostration uh, practice uh, is very strong, uh, kind of neurophysiologically, you might say. You're actually bowing around your center of gravity. So when we sit, we always sit with a strong center, the tangent of two inches below the navel. So when you do prostrations, pretty much whatever way you do them, you're going down and you're, you're getting up. People have slightly different ways of getting up, especially. But your center becomes stronger and stronger. And you can actually realize this. You know, it's palpable. So I do uh, strongly recommend uh, bowing practice. Um, and uh, if you're new here and you want some more instruction on that afterwards, we can... Uh, certainly do that, or just come any Tuesday, Thursday, or Saturday morning, and uh, you understand what it's all about. So thank you uh, for your frustration question, and I think we have to uh, stop the recording now.